All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> we're back again. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at mapping the shadows. So when we talk about mapping the shadows, the idea is that we want to just draw the shapes of the shadows. So we have to kind of simplify them. We have to make them have a little bit more of a simplistic look than they might look in a photo. In a photo, you're going to have blends, right? You're going to have areas where the shadows fade into each other. But here, for mapping it, we just want to get that structure of the shadows w for the shadows that are dominant so that we can later go back and shade them. So we're basically drawing like a map, if you think of a map, and you think about how you can see one city, it might show the boundaries of that city, uh, you might see roads, you might see parks, you might see different things. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. Sorry for the bumps. All right, so Tilda has some pretty high cheekbones, so I'm going to go ahead and just get those cheekbones in there. <laughs> okay, now also, on the right-hand side, below the cheekbone, right, there's kind of a shape of a darker shadow there. So I'm going to shape, make the shape of that, and that's part of the mapping. That's it right there. So I'm going to do the same thing on the left. I notice that there's another dark shadow on the left below the cheekbone. So there we go, there's the shape of that shadow. That is mapping a shadow. It's simply drawing the shape of it. That's all you gotta do. So I'm gonna look under the mouth. I see that there's a shadow that kind of comes out to the side, to the left-hand side. And then there's a darker shadow under the mouth. So I'm gonna draw the shape of that shadow. Now at the bottom of the chin, right, there's a shadow that kind of comes across that as well. So I'm gonna do that too. And I'm going to move on to the area by the nose. By the nose, I see kind of a couple different zones of shadow. I see a darker shadow right up against the nose. So I'm going to draw that shape of the shadow there. And then on the left of that, there's a lighter shadow. Okay, so you see how it's going? It's just looking at it and saying, okay, where are the shadows at? What shapes do those shadows make? On the nose, there's a very defined shadow on the tip. She actually has a bit of a cleft in her tip of her nose, which forms that uh, kind of bump on this side, which makes a darker shadow. Up here at the high part of the bridge, shadow there's a shadow that continues up to the eyebrow. I'm going to draw that shape in there. Okay, right here on the right hand side, there's a bit of a darker shadow in between the nose and the upper eyelid. Okay, and you'll see this is just simplifying it. It's not not getting too crazy. It's just looking at the structure and breaking it down one area at a time so that we know kind of where it's going to be shaded. <coughs> the neck is an interesting part because it has a lot of different shadows. It has a lot of different values. Uh, they kind of blend from one into the other. But we can still kind of simplify that down into a structure. Okay, so we've got like a shape right here for these shadows. Got another one coming down on the other side of the neck. Right? And it doesn't have to look exactly like the shadow. It's just the outside shape of it, right? Don't worry about the shading yet. We're going to get there. This is just mapping it out. We're going to have that plan so we know where to go when we move on to the shading. Okay, here we go, let's see, a little bit darker in there, okay, so I know you might not have been able to see everything I was just doing, because I know the paper was a little bit lower than the camera, my apologies for that. Uh, but I think that's pretty much the basic part of mapping for the face and the neck and the shoulders. So what I want to do now is I want to start looking up above the eyes. I want to look at the uh, forehead. And I see that to the left of the left-hand eyebrow, there's a bit of a shape of shadow there. There's a little bit more shadow coming down to the right of that. And then the rest of the head is pretty solid and even you get a little bit of shadow here in the middle so I'm gonna go ahead and get that but 
this is pretty uh, pretty much the same value all the way across but if I look over here I can see there's a little bit of shadow on the right now the hair at this point I can start blocking it in because there's a lot of shadow up in the hair um, hair tends to get value and that's because of the way that the light hits it it gets shine on it uh, we get darker values where we can see into the hair where hair is overlapping so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of getting the structure of the hair I skipped that step before and I told you guys I'd come back to it okay so Tilda has a wave going on, uh, kind of waves over to the right. So that's kind of an interesting hairdo to draw. But the nice thing about it is that you get these segments and you get these sections. Just like we talked about before we ended up going on break, right? We talked about those segments of hair and how you can kind of look at the shape of the way that those segments go. The same idea that we talked about uh, down here where we can look at the shapes of the shadows, we can look at the shapes of the hair like in the ear, we talked about that in the other one. We talked about how you can look at the shapes instead of just looking at the, the whole thing. Break it down, break it down into the small parts. The small parts are a lot easier to understand than the whole. so slowly building up that structure right it doesn't have to happen all at once guys it's a little bit at a time a little bit at a time it's going to get you there try to rush it try to just go through it real quick well it's going to look really rushed right take your time look at it slowly one thing at a time you want to work little by little to get there okay now that i have these segments right i can start saying well where are the darker shadows so down here at the bottom of the wave there's darker shadows so i'm drawing a shape to kind of represent that right and i'm just roughly doing it i'm not getting it exactly the same but guess what it's hair no one's going to really know the difference the parts that are going to matter more for likeness are always going to be the features themselves hair gives you some leeway when you're working on hair right people aren't going to be able to call you out they're not going to be able to say oh my goodness that strand of hair isn't right unless they're the person themselves or maybe the hairdresser but in this case right we're gonna be okay we're just gonna look at it and say okay well what's it doing general basic shapes of the dark areas first and no matter what if you're getting it pretty accurate on the shape it's gonna help you later anyways right because when you go to shade it you want to know kind of where things are gonna be and that's why we do this step. We map it out. We plan it out. Okay. So now this is pretty much done for the mapping. Okay. There's shapes. There's shapes in the hair. There's shapes on the face. There's shapes in the neck and on the shoulders for where the shadows are going to go. Okay. And that is mapping. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give us a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you soon.